Disclaimer. All the rankings in this video are based on my personal opinion and knowledge of the game. These might differ from yours. Also, PvE and DPS category rankings are based on synthetical tests that might differ depending on the spot and build. Hey guys, Mitty here. It's been a very long time since the last class ranking list update. 3 months. I was kind of struggling lately with some stuff in real life. And the constant updates were stopping my updates to the tier list. Mages rework, Hashashin, 11 skill and now Hadoom. Also in next update Tamer will be released. And it will take another week at least to update the list again. So I decided not to hold back anymore and finally pull out the tier list and try to be a little more simple on that. That list will be an update to the classes until and included the 11 skill update. Though it won't include Hadoom scores just yet. Since I started to make PvP videos with Hadoom skill builds in them, I will work my way into test the classes in Hadoom 2 to add the new ranking category. So without further ado, let's make a quick look to the last classes list that I did, that doesn't include Hashashin, and make comparison to the new ranking list I did just now. Let's begin as always from the last place, and make our way to the top. Lancer going from rank 14 to 16, with the addition of Hashashin that received higher spot and also the 11 skill update for Windwalker that made her a bit better in PvP. Windwalker remains on same 15th spot, but as I said before, gaining slight advantage over Lancer. Paladin didn't suffer any changes so far, since the 11 skill is kind of useless in any scenario. Gladiator just the same, remains on the same spot. Even though his 11 skill gave him some more flexibility in PvP scenarios, still it's not enough to add any points in the grid. Just like Lancer, Titan losing two positions to Hashashin and of course to the most broken class until now, Archmage. 11 skill once again giving nothing useful. 11 spot goes to Void Knight. The PvP score is very high, but other categories just doesn't give enough points to achieve higher spots in ranking overall and the 11 skill doesn't bring much usability. Raven, on the other hand, receives a good boost in PvP with the 11 skill addition, but still it's not enough to go higher in ranking. 10th place losing some ground to Hashashin. Follows the reworked striker, that just like Raven got some sort of boost, that still wasn't quite enough to bring him higher in ranking, due to 11 skill uselessness. Our newcomer Hashashin places on 8th spot in the list, with average score in all categories. The 11 skill though doesn't allow him to go higher than that, but at least he remains in top 10. 7th place goes to Destroyer, kind of undeserved you will say, but that's the only class that you just can't face roll, and have to play super precise and smart, otherwise you lose over and over. The skill cap is very high, but is hard to achieve. It's all about you whether you are ready to break your bones in order to become good at it or just choose an easier face roll class. 6th place goes to Reaper, just like before gaining that big boost from DPS category and now a more solid PvP with 11 skill, but still not enough for higher spots. And just like Destroyer, she really needs that precise and smart play to do well, but I didn't feel like I can add some more points into PvP. And we reached our top 5 classes that in my opinion are ideal to play in the current meta. Number 5. Invoker. Since the last year list was made looking at the Invoker with 11 skill already, the ranking now didn't change much, but remained a solid 5th place that won't move anytime soon. Number 4. Huntress. Finally going down from top tiers. And I would place her even lower but she still remains one of the most broken classes for Arena, due to her ability to stay immune 95% of the time. Number 3 goes to Berserker. With the new 11 skill, that monster became even more confident in Arena, with the enhanced ability to chase down his enemies and escape the sticky situations. Also, he still misses his passive power buff, that will apply Berserker mode automatically without the buff itself, that will make him even more scary. Solid placement. Number 2. Phantasma. Still one of the best classes to play, that has everything needed in her kit, 
but just not enough to be as broken as some classes in Arena. The rest is at its best. At last, substituting Huntress, the most overpowered class currently in game on global server, of course, and everyone knows it, Archmage. 100 points in Arena. Her 100% immunity uptime makes her unkillable in skilled hands. Good damage output, low risk and high rewarding class. Nothing else to add. For mass PvP, if you've seen my last videos, you can clearly see how strong that class is in any situation. Amazing survivability, great mobility and good damage output. Not as good in DPS, but the best in PvE. Totally deserves first place and a 98.19 point in the list. And that was it for the updated classes ranking list. Hope it will help you choose the right class for you according to the points for each category. Next update will include the newly released Tamer, maybe some classes rework and new category Hadum that might once again change the rankings. Hope I didn't upset you much with the rankings, I was trying to be as fair as possible. Don't forget to leave a like, comment and subscribe. That was Mitty, have a nice day! Why do I, baby, why do I Love the touch but never love the feeling